Hey, uh, Dan Fitzpatrick here, stockmarketmentor.com, and I want to look at IBM. I actually don't want to look at IBM. Um, <laughs> I used to trade IBM during this part. When I first started trading, this, along with every other stock, made me feel like a genius. Uh, but after this uh, pop here, and by the way, you'll notice that IBM uh, peaked much earlier than the internet bubble when that popped in, um, in March of 2000. But... Um, this has not been a good stock uh, for me. Uh, frankly, I don't think it's been a good stock for anyone else. If you're just, if you're looking to hold the stock, well, then it really hasn't been a good stock for you relative to other places you could put your money. And if you're just trying to trade the stock, I, I think there have typically been better opportunities elsewhere. That's just my personal opinion. Nothing against IBM, okay? Uh, nothing at all, but I kind of have a trade for us here. Now, this is a weekly chart. You see how much the stock is down, and hey, it's only Monday. Um, so this took a real shellacking today, and why is that? Well, we'll look at the daily charts. Earnings, um, they report earnings, and uh, shall we just say they weren't exactly stellar. Um, their revenues topped estimates, um, so that's a good thing. Uh, basically, everything topped estimates, but guess what? Estimates were apparently a little bit high. So we've got this stock that just absolutely tanked. Like I said, 5.5%. Five, uh, 5 .5%, and where this stock opened up was just about identical to where it closed on Friday. Um, so this is a, you know, this is a pretty nasty move. So is it too late to sell IBM? Um, yeah, of course it is. The question is, is it too early to buy IBM or should you be snatching up everything you can? Um, you know, that's a question that you're going to have to figure out uh, for yourself, but I do have a trade for you. This is the thing. If you look at the blue squiggles here, um, this is the bull, these are the Bollinger Bands. Um, two standard deviations away from the value of the 20-day moving average. Now, um, the stock is um, typically like 91% um, of the times it's going to be closing within these two standard deviations. That's just statistical analysis. Um, the wider these bands get, the more rare it is that the price ever will go outside the bands. It's just like, again, uh, standard deviation, statistics. That's what statistics do is they measure numbers and probabilities. And so with this thing out um, beyond the the uh, the second standard deviation downward, that's kind of a rare event. You'll see back here, it did it not even for a day. It just, um, you know, moved down below this and then recovered and kept going higher. Same thing here, just kind of tagged it a little bit and then ran higher. Here, we had a little bit of an exception. It was kind of a big exception if you're trying to buy this pig, um, but we had an exception where several days in a row, the stock traded below the uh, second uh, two standard deviation uh, level and just kept going. And then finally it ran up. Okay. Well, one thing that we don't see is three standard deviations. So I want you to look at this. Watch what happens when I change the two to a three. Okay. Now, this is something you don't see every day. Um, if we just look at the Bollinger Bands themselves, now this is right at three standard deviations. This only happens like less than 1% of the time. In this entire chart, at no time intraday or certainly closing value has this come close to three standard deviations. The one time that it has here, well, guess what happened? Boom. Uh, stock ran higher. Typically, though, not always, you have here, but typically, back here, you see the rebound. 
when a stock falls so far that it is below three standard deviations from where um, from where the 20 day moving average is. That's just the point of central tendency. You can use whatever moving average you want. Um, I think that 20 is the best, which is why I use it. Um, whenever this falls this far, your odds of making money by simply buying the stock are really, really high. Just because from a statistical standpoint, this stock is breaking the rules. It's gone too far down. And so this morning, or excuse me, tomorrow morning, uh, when you look at IBM, I would just suggest really just kind of looking at 133. Uh, if the stock starts trading above 133, uh, I think you're good. Uh, another way you could trade it, which would be really, really tight, is you look at the low of 131.70. And you put a stop a little bit below that. You could see this, the 200-day moving average. So maybe you put a stop just below the 200, uh, maybe at 131. You're not even risking 1% on that trade. So this is, and this is this kind of market, man. It kind of sucks. Um, but in this kind of market, this is the type of trade that will tend to work for you. As always, it's your trade. It ain't mine. Make sure that you're managing your risk with position sizes that are proper and appropriate for you and also with stops that you can defend. Meaning, if I said, why'd you put the stop there? You'd be able to say, well, I did it because, you know, fill in the blank, below the 200-day moving average, even number, uh, whatever you want to call it. But you need to have answers to those questions. So anyway, that's all I got for you. By the way, if you're not a member yet, um, I am holding a live class tomorrow night and it's really specifically intended for uh, our new members and we've got a bunch of them lately. And so I invite you to join a uh, free trial and it literally is free. You can cancel anytime you want and then you can get in on that class that I'm teaching tomorrow night at uh, eight o'clock Eastern, five o'clock. Uh, Pacific time. Okay. I will see you next time.